Picture this, while Congress was debating whether to fund a single billion dollar destroyer, the Navy quietly pulled off the impossible. They went from zero to construction ready on an entirely new class of ships in just seven months. The McClung class medium landing ship isn't just another Pentagon procurement program dragging through red tape. It's a masterclass in how to build a fleet when China's expanding at breakneck speed and you're running out of time. What if I told you the Navy just licensed not one, but two foreign warship designs, hired a shipyard that's never built a major combatant, and is betting the entire Marine Corps' Pacific strategy on ships that cost less than a single F-35 fighter squadron? Welcome back to our deep dive into America's naval revolution. When we last covered the medium landing ship program in February, it was still searching for an identity, stuck between PowerPoint presentations and political promises. Today, the USS McClung has a name, a builder, and steel about to be cut. But this isn't your typical defense success story. It's a high-stakes gamble that's rewriting the procurement playbook. Here's what we're unpacking today. How the Navy transformed a budget crisis into an opportunity. Why they're betting on Israeli and Dutch ship designs over American ones. The radical new construction strategy that could revolutionize shipbuilding and the ticking clock that's driving every decision. Because make no mistake, Every day without these ships is another day China's artificial islands go unchallenged in the South China Sea. The McClung class represents something unprecedented in modern naval history. The Pentagon admitting that perfect is the enemy of good enough. And in the Indo-Pacific chess match, good enough when delivered on time beats perfect when never delivered. Let's see how they're pulling it off. Forget everything you know about how the Navy builds ships. The McClung class throws out the traditional playbook of spending a decade designing the perfect vessel. Instead, imagine walking into a car dealership, but instead of buying a car, you're buying the blueprints and the right to modify them however you want. That's essentially what the Navy did this August. The primary design, the Israeli Logistic Support Vessel, or ILSV, is like a pickup truck that's been battle-tested in the Mediterranean. At roughly 350 to 400 feet long, with a draft shallow enough to beach on a coral atoll, these ships are the maritime equivalent of a C-130 Hercules. Unglamorous workhorses that get the job done. The Navy acquired the complete technical data package on August 8, 2025. Here's the genius part. The ship can carry 50 Marines, 648 short tons of equipment. That's about 30 joint light tactical vehicles and still beach itself like a landing craft from D-Day. Think of it as a floating forward operating base that can literally drive itself onto a beach offload an entire marine platoon with their gear and be gone before enemy satellites complete their next pass. But here's where it gets interesting. The backup design, the Daman LST-100 from the Netherlands, was licensed on July 30th, 2025. Why two designs? It's like having both an iPhone and Android blueprint. If one hits a snag, you pivot to the other without losing momentum. The Navy calls this competitive tension. But really, it's insurance against the unknown. The real innovation isn't the ships themselves, it's how they'll be built. Enter the Vessel Construction Manager, or VCM, approach, floated in an August 6th request for information. Instead of one shipyard controlling everything, you have a construction manager coordinating multiple yards, like a general contractor building a subdivision. One yard cuts steel, another installs engines, a third does electronics. It's Henry Ford meets Amazon Fulfillment, distributed parallel fast. This isn't just clever, it's essential. To hit the Marine Corps' requirement of 18 to 35 ships, the Navy needs to build two to four ships per year. Traditional shipbuilding? That's a pipe dream. But with VCM and build-to-print designs, now you're cooking with gas. The McClung class story begins with failure. December 2024. The Navy cancels its original request for proposals after industry bids come in at nearly double the budget. We're talking 475 to $600 million per ship instead of the planned 150 to $175 million. Most programs would have died right there, but sometimes crisis breeds innovation. The solution came from history. During World War II, America built 2,710 Liberty ships using a British design adapted for mass production. Same playbook, different century. By January 2025, the Navy issued a new request for information, essentially asking industry, what do you already have on the shelf that we can build yesterday? 14 companies responded with nine different designs, but only two met the magic criteria. Already built, military proven, and available for technology transfer. The Israeli ILSV had a crucial advantage. 
Bollinger Shipyards in Mississippi had already built two for Israel in 2023 to 24, the INS Nashan and INS Kamemut. They knew the design, understood the construction quirks, and critically had Americanized the measurements and standards. January 16, 2025 marked a turning point. Secretary Carlos del Toro didn't just name a ship, he named an entire class. The McClung class honors Major Megan McClung, the first female Marine officer killed in Iraq the first female Naval Academy graduate to die in combat. This wasn't random. McClung was a public affairs officer, someone who understood that wars are won, not just with weapons, but with speed of information and decision. These ships embody that philosophy, fast to build, fast to deploy, fast to adapt. The acceleration from that point was breathtaking. April 17th, Navy signals intent for Bollinger to build the lead ship. July 30th, Daman license acquired. August 8th, Bollinger license sealed. August 12th to 27th, sole source construction solicitation window opens and closes. We're watching acquisition at the speed of war, not the speed of bureaucracy. To put this in perspective, the literal combat ship took 10 years from concept to first delivery. The Constellation class frigate, still working on it after five years. The McClung class, seven months from program restart to construction contract. That's not evolution, that's revolution. Let's wargame this. It's 2027. Tensions over Taiwan are reaching a boiling point. Traditional amphibious ships like the USS America, all 45,000 tons of her, are massive radar targets that Chinese DF-21D carrier killer missiles can spot from space. But scattered across the Philippines, Palau, and the Federated States of Micronesia are small teams of Marines with mobile anti-ship missiles operating from islands you can't even see on most maps. Enter the McClung class. At 22 knots and with a 6,500 nautical mile range, these ships become the circulatory system of distributed maritime operations. One night, LSM-3 beaches on a remote Philippine island offloads a HIMARS battery and disappears before dawn. Two days later, the HIMARS denies an entire strait to Chinese naval forces. Multiply this by 20 ships and suddenly the Pacific isn't an ocean. It's a minefield of mobile, hidden firepower. We're already seeing the concept validated. Exercise Balikatan 2025 with the Philippines tested rapid island hopping logistics. Exercise Talisman Sabre with Australia proved the distributed operations concept. But here's the kicker. They're doing it with borrowed allied vessels and converted commercial ships. Imagine what's possible with purpose-built McClung class ships. The math is compelling. One traditional amphib can be in one place, but six McClung class ships for the same price? They can cover an area the size of Texas each capable of independent operations. It's not about fighting ship to ship, it's about turning every island into an unsinkable aircraft carrier, every atoll into a missile battery. But combat's only half the story. Typhoon Mawar devastates Guam. A McClung class is there in 24 hours with emergency supplies, beaching directly where larger ships can't reach. Volcanic eruption in Tonga? These ships deliver aid without waiting for port facilities. In the Pacific, where natural disasters are as certain as sunrise, these ships earn goodwill faster than any destroyer ever could. Here's the scenario that keeps Chinese planners awake. Every McClung class represents 50 Marines who could appear anywhere, anytime, with enough firepower to make holding those artificial islands very expensive. It's not about invading. It's about making the cost of aggression unbearable. Death by a thousand beach landings. Let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say the foreign elephant. The Navy is building American warships based on Israeli and Dutch designs. Critics are having a field day. Why can't American shipyards design American ships? The brutal truth? They can, but not at $150 million a pop, and not in time to matter. The industrial base challenge is real. Bollinger Shipyards, while experienced with the ILSV, has never built a U.S. Navy combatant. Their Lockport facility will need significant expansion to hit production rates. The workforce, already stretched building Coast Guard cutters, needs to triple. The supply chain for everything from steel to electronics is fragile. One bottleneck and the entire program could grind and halt. Then, there's the requirements creep monster. The Congressional Budget Office warned costs could balloon to $475 to $600 million per ship if the Navy can't resist adding bells and whistles. Just add a better radar. What about anti-submarine capability? Shouldn't it have vertical launch cells? Each addition is reasonable in isolation, deadly in combination. It's like ordering a Honda Civic and slowly turning it into a Lamborghini. Defeats the entire purpose. The political battlefield is equally treacherous. Some lawmakers want these ships built in their districts. Classic pork barrel politics. 
Others question why we need second-rate ships when China's building destroyers. The fiscal year 2026 budget battle will be brutal. The Navy needs consistent multi-year funding to make this work, but Congress thinks in two-year election cycles. Let's be honest about survivability. These aren't battleships. They're thin-skinned, lightly armed, and vulnerable to everything from submarines to shore-based missiles. One direct hit and you lose 50 Marines. The Navy's answer? Don't get hit. Speed, stealth, and dispersion over armor. It's a calculated risk, one that makes traditional naval officers very uncomfortable. The integration nightmare is just beginning. These commercial design ships need to talk to F-35s, Aegis destroyers, and marine tactical networks. That means retrofitting military-grade communications, encryption, and battle management systems into hulls designed for civilian standards. It's like installing a Ferrari engine in a pickup truck. Possible, but not pretty. So where does this leave us in September 2025? In just seven months, the McClung class program achieved what most Pentagon programs take years to accomplish. We have a named class honoring a genuine American hero, two proven designs with technical data rights secured, a prime contractor lined up with sole source justification, a revolutionary construction strategy in development, and most importantly, momentum. The strategic implications are massive. If successful, the McClung class doesn't just give the Marine Corps new ships, it proves the entire Pentagon procurement system can be reformed. It shows that commercial designs can meet military needs. That speed beats perfection. That distributed production beats centralized control. These aren't just ships. They're a proof of concept for how America can still out-innovate and outbuild any competitor. The next 90 days are critical. Contract award following the August solicitation, VCM decision that could revolutionize naval shipbuilding. FY 2026 budget marks that determine if we build two ships a year or four. Each decision cascades. Success breeds success. Failure compounds failure. Remember, while we're debating, China's shipyards are building. They launched more naval tonnage last year than the entire U.S. battle fleet. The McClung class is our asymmetric answer, not matching them ship for ship, but changing the game entirely. It's Moneyball for naval warfare. But here's the billion dollar question I leave you with. The McClung class proves we can build ships faster and cheaper by embracing good enough over perfect. So why are we still spending 15 years and $13 billion on Ford class carriers? Is the McClung model the future of all naval shipbuilding or just a desperate exception that proves the rule? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Is America finally ready to choose quantity over quality or are we still fighting the last war while China prepares for the next one? The McClung class story is far from over. Hit subscribe to follow this revolutionary program as steel gets cut and these game-changing ships take shape. Because in the Pacific chess match, the next move could change everything.